Welcome everybody to Webinar 777, Life-Changing Webinars to Change Lives and Disciple Nations. Today's topic is your 401k or IRA, the missing piece. When you change your investments, you change your life. I'm Dr. Joseph Peck, your moderator for today's webinar, and I'm excited to have as our special guest expert today, John Norquay, who is one of the top investment advisors that I personally know. And along with John, we have three other panelists, including John's wife, Sherry, John's business partner, Don Miller, and my good friend, Larry Tyler. We'll spend just a few minutes briefly introducing our panelists so you know who's talking to you, and then we'll get started with the teaching. John Norquay is a leading authority on technical uh, analysis as it applies to retirement investing, but he can also help you with regular investments that aren't in your retirement account as well. He entered the investment industry about 20 years ago in 1992 and has spent the last 10 years building uh, cyclic analysis or cyclic analysis models and implementing them in numer numerous applications. So you're going to hear about these cycles a little bit later. And he's currently the president and CEO of Pivot Point Advisors, LLC, based in Wisconsin. And he plans to change the landscape in the 401k industry nationwide with his innovative investment approach. Now, John's wife, Sherry, is a diehard entrepreneur. And uh, she's also a, uh, a mother of five children. She's currently homeschooling four of those children. And she assists her husband, John, in, in the 401k business. She writes uh, songs, she records, and she performs worship music. Um, and she's involved with some other um, uh, entrepreneurial uh, endeavors. And she also is building tangible businesses for women in Africa. Uh, Larry Tyler is a good friend of mine. He lives in North Carolina. We met through a webinar about a year ago. I met him in person at the Kingdom Economic Yearly Summit about a half year ago. Larry Tyler's written a book called Romancing the Loan. He has, I think, about 30 years of financial training in the banking industry, so he's got a good head on his shoulders from a financial standpoint. I feel very comfortable letting Larry manage the finances for my business. He's very trustworthy and has a servant's heart. And now I'm going to ask John to go ahead and introduce his business partner, Don Miller, and then we'll have Sherry say our opening prayer. Hi, this is John. Don Miller, I actually met him on our way to a Promise Keepers convention maybe 12 years ago. And we've been very close ever since. There are a few years in between where we kind of left contact. He inherited his grandmother's house out in Cape Cod, which is not very close to Madison, Wisconsin, so, so we were separated for a bit. But after the Promise Keepers convention, we had met in my office for a couple of years doing Bible studies. And as it turns out, when we reconnected, we were doing management in a very similar way, tracking cycles. And it was just a divine meeting. Don has his MBA, his executive MBA from uh, UW Wisconsin. And he owns a seat on the American Stock Exchange and has been extremely successful managing money and being a market maker. So we are so pleased to have him with us tonight. Well, thank you for that introduction, John. OK, Father God, we come before you in Jesus' name. And we ask that you pour blessing over everyone participating in this meeting. We pray that you'd reveal yourself and speak truth and light in this dark world to bring hope and peace to those who have ears to hear your word. We thank you that you sent your son Jesus so that we can turn from sin and have everlasting life, and also that we may walk in his fullness on this earth. Reveal yourself right now so that when the storms of life come, we can stand strong with confidence and our faith firmly established within Jesus. And we pray this in his holy name. Amen. 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 Beautiful prayer. Thank you so much, Sherry. Well, John wanted to go ahead and ask uh, the people in the audience two questions before we get started. So I'm going to go ahead and run those polls since I have to do that from my computer first. And then I'm going to turn over the controls to John, and we're going to let him run his presentation from his computer. So the first question that we want to ask is, 
this. Do you have one, an IRA, two, a 401k, three, both, or, or four, neither? So go ahead and complete that, and we'll show the results, and then we'll close that poll, and we'll ask another question. We're going to go ahead and share the results so you can see that about half of you don't have either an IRA or a 401k, about a quarter of you have both, and about 15 percent have an IRA or a 401k. So thank you for completing that. And now I'm going to go ahead and conduct the next poll question. What is your work status? So go ahead and complete that. Are you still working? One, are you retired too? Are you a homemaker three or some other answer? So about 30% of you say you're still working. About half of you say you're retired. And about a third of you say you're a homemaker. So anyway, thank you for completing that. Without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and turn the presentation over to John. This presentation has been formulated initially for the 401k marketplace that works the same in the IRA. So the pieces to the 401k puzzle is the first is the plan sponsor or the company that you work for. You know, they provide the plan and and the third party administrator is the group that actually makes sure that the plan stays in compliance. And then the record keeper is the one that provides the investments, the statements, the online access to your accounts and such. And then the investment advisor sets up the plan and, the, and provides the education and monitors the core fund lineup. And in, and in some, some instances, instances, all, all of these are the same. same. Like at the fidelity, you will provide some of those large, large providers. providers. Now, now there's, there's really two typical approaches to the mutual fund industry. So in the very first uh, approach, you create your own portfolio. And if you're in an IRA, quite often it's your investment advisor that creates the portfolio. But quite often, you use a, a method of using uh, asset allocation and diversification. And the reason that this method is used is because we don't really know what's going to happen next in the market. So you kind of want to have some of everything. So. In the 401k side, you're actually given a whole universe of funds to choose from. You know, and those and those the universe of funds represents all the different major asset classes. Mid cap growth, core, value, and then the center box is this mid cap core growth and value. And then the smaller box is small cap growth and such. So you have all these different asset classes and you want to have a representation of all of them. So that is the number one way of doing things in the 401k industry, and that is what uh, advisors do for people in their investment programs. So why do you use asset allocation and diversification? It's all based on modern portfolio theory. Now, modern portfolio theory actually started, uh, it's the only investment program that ever won a Nobel Prize. And they actually started studying this back in the 50s. And they won a Nobel Prize in 1991. And it's actually now the foundation for the prudent man laws, which all uh, investment advisory laws are made from. So how does it work? If we start on the left and we're going through time, if we think, let's say, the gas stocks, the gas price, price of gas is going to be going up, and we're right, and we put all of our money into gas stocks, then we do very well. But what if we're wrong and gas does nothing but go down over the next period of time? What other investment isn't going to go down while gas is going down? And in this instance, transportation stocks would actually go up if gas was going down. Okay, So they have an inverse relationship to each other in the economy. And the market is actually a thermometer of the economy. So what we see is that we're right. Gas prices went up, gas stocks went up, transportation went down, all right? Now, what modern portfolio theory understood all the way back in the 1950s is that the economy travels in cycles. 
So they know that at some point, as gas is going up now, at some point in the future, it's going to go down. So the reason we have transportation in, that, in our portfolio is because then at that point, it will go up. So as time goes along and the cycles continue, then you'll continually have this inverse relationship happening in your portfolio. And over time, your portfolio will go in the middle. So without losing any long-range return, your portfolio has a lot less volatility. So that is, that is what asset allocation and diversification is formulated upon. However, how many of you in your portfolios have experienced this beautiful rise without volatility? And I doubt if anyone. So what has happened is the investment community today, I call it the, the lie of, from the pit of Wall Street, is gas is taken out, gas box, transportation stocks are taken out and replaced with growth stocks and value stocks. So what is the problem with this? Well, growth and value stocks don't have an inverse relationship like gas stocks and transportation. So I actually had, this is representing a, a portfolio I just recently took over. And it shows, this was put together by a Merrill Lynch representative. And it's one of, uh, is a very prominent uh, professional in our community. But the green is the Dow Jones Industrial Average. And you can see the MDD, which is the maximum drawdown. This, goes, this chart goes back to 2007 before the last recession. So the Dow lost 49.86% in the last recession. Now, the equity funds in this portfolio, the American Growth Fund, which so many people have in their portfolios, is the red one, and it lost 50.21%. The yellow is an MFS value fund, which is another very popular fund. It lost 50.16%. And the white line is the MFS International Fund, which lost 55.48%. So you can see when the market goes down, everything seems to go down. And when the market goes up, everything seems to go up. There's not very much. Um, they, they all seem to work in concert as opposed to how it's supposed to work. So that's kind of the problem with asset allocation and diversification. Now, the other way of doing things in the 401k market, uh, target funds have become very popular. So in life cycle or target funds, each fund has an asset mix that's designed for someone planning to retire in the target year. So if you're going to retire around 2030, you'd have a 2030 target fund. So you actually put your money into one fund instead of picking out you know, a whole bunch of different mutual funds for your portfolio. And then an investment advisor manages that fund for you. So it makes it very easy for the person that doesn't want to figure out how to do asset allocation and diversification. They actually have someone doing it for them. Unfortunately, the Fidelity Asset Manager Fund is 85% is, uh, equities and 15% uh, fixed income. And the Fidelity Asset Manager Fund is 50% of equity, 50% income. So you can see as they compare to the S&P 500 index, this goes back to the year 2000, so it in includes the last two recessions. All of them go up together and they go down together. So whether you look like you're going to retire in 2010 or 2030, you've lost 50% twice in the last 10 years. So it doesn't really reduce risk. So what piece is missing? This is what tonight is all about. In 401ks, the piece that's missing is a professionally managed brokerage account inside the 401k. So a brokerage account is, is basically like at a Fidelity or a TD Ameritrade or, or wherever, where you can buy whatever you want to inside the plan, inside that account. So they have these accounts now inside of 401k plans. So this brokerage account actually acts as an additional investment option. 
So you can put as, as much into that investment option or as little as you choose. And then uh, we would actually be able to manage that brokerage account for you. So, so many times retirees, when they leave their, their place of work, they'll actually roll over their 401k account into a brokerage account so that it will be managed professionally. And now you can actually have that done for you while you're still working. So this is where, where our firm, Pivot Point Advisors, can actually provide the value added to your portfolio at no additional cost. So if we were managing money the same way as everybody else, it wouldn't really matter, right? <laughs> so what makes us different is that we do cyclic analysis. Now, we know that God made everything in our world in waves and cycles. So we know that light moves in waves and that the color spectrum is simply different wavelengths. Sound moves in waves. Radio stations are simply different wavelengths. And as I mentioned earlier, our economy moves in waves also. Modern portfolio theory even confirms that. So we as humans do things cyclically as well. You know, we, we elect a president every four years. So what happens there is since we're all humans, whoever's in charge, whoever's the president in his cabinet, it's been proven that, that if it's a recessionary year, the year of the election, that never has the incumbent won. So they want to make the economy look as good as possible leading up to the election, of course. And then after the election, everything has a way of uh, going back to the mean. So if you actually invested $1,000 in 1952, two years before the presidential election, and then sold after the election, and just held it in cash for the two, next two years, and you continually did that again and again and again, your $1,000 would have turned into almost $31,000 today. Had you done exactly the opposite, and you bought right after the election and sold two years later, then held cash for the two years leading into the next election, and then did that again and again and again until now, your $1,000 would have only turned into $2,000. So we can see that the presidential election causes a cycle all by itself. Now, tax season also causes cycles. It's something that comes every single year. And we as people spend our money differently based off of tax season. And we know that 70% of our economy is us out spending money because we don't have that much money manufacturing anymore. So the Fed monetary policy is probably the largest um, contributor to cycles in our economy and therefore our market. Um, I don't know why it travels in cycles like it does, but it, it definitely does. So what does a, a cycle look like? A cycle is simply a sine wave. It goes up, it goes down, and repeats. As Don had said before, wash, rinse, and repeat. But we used to hear all the time the saying that uh, you, know, you should buy low and sell high and then just repeat. And a perfect world would be out on the way down as the market goes down or the economy goes down. And we would be in when the market goes up or the economy goes up. So buy low, sell high isn't really talked about anymore. It's been replaced with asset allocation, and I don't really think that it should have been. So are these cycles really in the market? So let's take a look. This is actually a 200-day moving average of the S&P 500 from 1998 through 2010. So you can definitely see two cycles there. There's the hypothetical, and there's reality. So cycles definitely exist. The 200-day moving average takes out the, the shorter-term ups and downs, but it definitely exposes the longer-term uh, cycles that are in the market. Now, these cycles will occur shorter-term as well, but for this instance, we just wanted to show the longer-term ones. 
So how do we monitor these waves and cycles? Don? Don, are you there? I am here. I'm waiting uh, just right. to see the slide load. It's kind of half loaded right now. Can you folks see? There we go. There we go. Um, I, I guess the, the, the point I'd like to make here is that uh, there are many people who uh, trade the markets. They provide liquidity to the marketplace uh, as, as a part of their natural job. But for example, that's something that I've done for, for many years. And what we do in terms of providing that liquidity to the marketplace is that we uh, use the same cycles that uh, John is talking about except we use cycles on a much smaller time frame than, for example, the slide that you just looked at. So uh, where over the course of a day, uh, we as traders uh, may be looking at uh, any cycles anywhere from uh, one minute cycles to maybe a, an hourly cycle in terms of uh, judging the ebbs and flows over the course of the day, and, and you see that in the top part of this, this graph, that's what professional traders use to, um, to profit, uh, to provide the service of providing liquidity, but also profit as a business in doing so. Um, the bottom half of this chart uh, re reflects the fact that these cycles, as John indicated, also work on a longer term basis. So uh, the, the strategies and the methods, the cycles, the tools that the professional trader uses over the course of every day, minute by minute, hour by hour, are the same tools that we're bringing to Pivot Point in, in allowing us to uh, take advantage of how professional traders who do not follow the buy and hold methodology, who do not buy at the beginning of the day and hold all day long, uh, you know, it, it's, it's a matter of pro moving that sort of a strategy and a technique to the longer term investing world, to the longer term time cycles. And so again, the top charts in this particular chart uh, reflect the fact that this is uh, these are time frames that are very small in nature, but when you look at the lower picture, if, if you were to take the legends off and the titles off, you'd say, gee, they look pretty similar. Uh, well, the top two are five and 60 minute charts and the bottom two are daily and weekly charts. Same uh, methodology, they both move in waves, they both move in cycles. Uh, one just happens to be moving a lot more quickly than the other. And so what we're trying to do and what we are doing at Pivot Point is we're bringing the, the eye of the professional trading world to long-term investing and applying what consistently works on an intraday basis to longer-term cycles. Exactly. Thanks. So the biggest, the, the most important piece to investing is to never lose a lot of money when you're wrong. You know, in asset allocation and diversification, we saw how people twice in the last 10 years have lost 50% of their portfolios. But when you lose 50% of your portfolio, you have to gain 100% just to break even. So if you had $100,000, you lost 50%, now you're down to $50,000. You have to double your $50,000 to get back up to 100000 I think we all know it's much harder and takes much longer to earn 100% than it takes to lose 50% in our markets. So, so again, it's it's very it's a patience game, and when you're wrong, you know, just get out. Because <laughs> if you only lose 10% in your portfolio, you only have to gain 11 to break even. So, some people say that well, that you must be timing the market. Well, we don't really call it market timing, but you know, if, if buying low and selling high is, is timing the market, then okay, we're doing it. <laughs> now, but everyone has been told you cannot do that. So what I wanted to do is just use an algorithm to show the proof of concept of, of timing the market. So the results you're going to end up seeing are simply a proof of concept. I'm not saying that anybody's portfolio actually did this, but 
we're going to be using a mathematical formula that tracks cycles of investment. So that we're going to be using one formula, and we're going to be using it on the Oppenheimer Developing Markets Fund, which is a very uh, prominent mutual fund. So before I get into that, <coughs> a circle actually represents a cycle. It, can ex it explains the cycle. So if you were going to draw a circle on a piece of paper, and then you started moving the paper left to right as you're drawing the circle, you can see from this that it actually draws a sine wave. So since a circle can explain a sine wave uh, geometrically, then we can assign an algorithm to it to keep track of it. So that's really what the algorithm is that we're using. It's simply a, an algorithm that tracks the cycles. So this algorithm, placed on the Oppenheimer Developing Markets Fund, uh, kind of proves how important it is to stop, to get out when you're wrong. Because this program only won 51% of the time. So when it, when it decided to buy in, it was only right half the time. It was wrong the other half of the time. But you can see the average profit or loss was 16% when it was right over the next 110 market days, which is about a quarter. And when it was wrong, it lost only 3.5% and got out within the next 22 days. So we're going to see kind of how that looks on the next chart. So these results cover the last two uh, recessions. And like I said, the key, this is the entire key to the success of investing. Because we know we're going to be wrong at least 20 to 30% of the time. So what we're looking at are the re actual graphic results of this algorithm on that fund. And it goes back to 2000. Now, the little dark squiggly line is the dark blue squiggly line is the actual mutual fund. And the portfolio is the little mountain chart that's above it. So you can see the flat spots in the chart that are in light blue. That's when the algorithm was sitting in cash and just earning a little bit of interest. The dark blue is when it was actually invested into the mutual fund. So if you look back in 2002, you can see while the, the mutual fund was going up, the algorithm was invested in the mutual fund. When the mutual fund started going down in the end of 2002, it went into cash and maintained a higher level. And then when the recovery came after the recession in the years 2003, 2004, 2005, and 2006, you can see that the cycle's left side is much greater than the right-hand side, and it was sitting inside the, the uh, mutual fund for much longer periods of time than sitting in cash. And then it came for a time of, of patience. You know, the years 2006 and 2007 was basically just volatility and went sideways. But if you stayed patient, you can see that in 2008 and 2009 you were richly rewarded because your account maintained closer to a $300,000 value and did not drop all the way back down to $90,000 like the mutual fund did. Now, the next thing that happens is what I call the hallelujah curve. Because if you look at the mutual fund line on the bottom, it goes from 90000 up to about a 180000 which is a double. So in the last recovery, it doubled in just under a year. But if you look at the portfolio value, it also doubled, but it doubled from 300000 to 600000 That is exactly what compounding is all about. If you lose the money and are always trying to get back to even, you're not getting any compounding results. If you don't lose the money and then in the next recovery, you can start from a much higher point, now you're actually compounding your money. So that's our entire objective. So in the last 10 years, the S&P 500 went from 100,000 down to 90,000. So you basically lost $10,000 and 10 years of your life. 
the actual mutual fund, if you just bought it and held it for that 10 years, went from $100,000 to $189,000. But this mutual fund utilizing this algorithm actually turned into almost $600,000. So dramatic difference. And it just shows that we humans create these algorithms. And if an algorithm can outperform the market, then we humans who create them should be able to do it also. So now we're going to transition back from the concept to reality and talk about what we are actually offering uh, for people. So now that you understand a little bit about cyclic analysis, um, be before we talk about this, we believe that you need to know where you're at financially before you can really know where you're going. And I think Larry Tyler would agree with that. But uh, you know, so therefore, we will actually, we believe you should have some type of retirement projection. And we will actually provide that for our clients. But Don, could you actually run through the next couple of slides, giving people an idea of our different models? Absolutely. I, th I think we all be kidding ourselves if we if we believe there was a one size fits all model, um, cookie cutter approach, and 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 that's the same way that we we view this business. Meaning that um, everybody's situation is is a bit unique. We're at different points in our life cycle. <laughs> Speaking of cycles, right? Um, and we have different investment objectives based on where we are, what our needs are, what our goals are. And so what we do is that we, we look at what we call your risk profile. Uh, based on your uh, place in life, your demographics, your willingness to accept certain levels of risk, which you uh, let us know via a, a filling out a very comprehensive risk profile form, basically puts you in one of four categories. And you can see the categories here on the slide. Uh, the first one would be aggressive. This might be somebody who's uh, willing to accept larger drawdowns uh, or maybe earlier uh, in their life they can afford to withstand greater swings. Uh, and you go to the other end of the spectrum, at the bottom of this page, for example, where uh, you might be uh, moderately conservative, maybe a little bit older in your life. Uh, not as willing to accept drawdowns, or maybe you just can't stomach the risk that somebody in the aggressive uh, category may. And so, again, our risk profile form allows you basically to uh, fit yourself into one of these categories based on your personality and where you are in your investing cycle. And on the right-hand side of this, we've described essentially how we will invest your funds based on which category you fall into. So for example, if you are in an aggressive investor, uh, we would aim to get you into a new cycle earlier. Uh, we may uh, look to get you into uh, excessive drops in terms of getting you in after the drop. Let's say you're in a, a major downtrend, but the market's got so extended, so overextended that, that there's some proper opportunity to be made uh, as that market is just overreacting to the downside. If you are an aggressive uh, investor, uh, we may very well put your money to use in, in, in that uh, regard. If you are moderately aggressive, uh, we might take a similar approach but start with smaller positions. If you're a moderate investor, uh, ideally we like to see uh, some turn signals uh, showing up in terms of letting us know that, for, for example, a bear cycle may be ending. Uh, we'd like to get some positive confirmation so that we'd, we'd want more information before getting you into a cycle. And, and at the other end of the spectrum, again, if you're moderately conservative, uh, we'd be looking for even more confirmation and safety of principle would be paramount. So again, based on your risk profile, based on your personality, based on where you are in your life cycle, we have a very in-depth, thorough questionnaire on the Pivot Point website that you can look at to give you a feel for the sorts of questions that, that you'll want to ask yourself and the same questions that we ask of our own investors so that we can put you into the right box. And, and again, in terms of differences uh, between the models, you know, we, we, we take on a, a little bit of a different approach 
uh, not only in terms of timing, but in, in terms of what your po portfolio might be comprised of. Uh, in, in all cases, we use the S&P 500, uh, what's called an ETF or an exchange traded fund. We use that as our primary investing vehicle. We use it because we don't have to worry about stock picking. We don't have to worry about spending our market energies trying to determine what, what new stock, what is the hot stock that's going to go gangbusters because it's all but impossible. Uh, we are automatically diversifying by being invested in an index and we are uh, keeping our clients away from what I would call specific company risk. What happens if a specific company goes bankrupt? What happens if a special news item comes out with a stock of one company falls 30%? We're automatically diversified. We can focus our market energies on, on, on cycle timing and so that we use an S&P 500 traded, uh, exchange traded fund. Uh, in the case of a, a more aggressive portfolio, we, we may very well supplement that with uh, emerging market, with international uh, stocks uh, or, or funds, uh, uh, funds that might be a little bit more volatile but have a little bit more upside to them. Uh, we do that with more aggressive portfolios, but we shy away from them for the moderate, moderately conservative portfolios. Uh, we could also consider for the aggressive portfolio making money by investing in bear funds, meaning that if the market goes down, uh, your fund would go up because it reflects the inverse of the market. Uh, so again, depending upon where you fall in, what type of profile you have, the type of investor that we're describing you as, we're going to use all sorts of different tools. We're going we're to differ in terms of our timing, and we're going to differ in terms of uh, what your portfolio would be comprised of. Done. So, so how have we actually done? Um, I have a, a chart of each of our models, aggressive, moderate, aggressive, moderate, and moderate conservative. And these, these charts start from February 18th. Don actually started managing the portfolios in February. So I figured the high of the market in February was a good place to start. So you can see on this aggressive model that right away, the, the S&P 500 lost 7%, and we went down maybe a tad, but not very much. As, as the S&P 500 started catching the next cycle, you know, we caught the whole cycle and made a nice increase. Um, that doesn't happen perfectly every single time. As you'll be able to see over the next longer-term cycle, the S&P 500 lost from, from the top down you know, around 10 or 11%. And we basically just went back to where we started from. So there was still a 7 or 8% gap in, in, the, in what I call the value, the sea of value. <laughs> um, then we go into the next week where the market had the biggest increase in one week that it's ever had. And since the volatility was so great, we were just not in the market at that point. And that's actually good news because we did not participate during the next week in the beginning of October when the market lost uh, down to about 20% below where it was earlier. And you can see that in the, in the sea of volatility in the S&P 500, there were a few waves that we had on top, but we maintained virtually all of our account value when the S&P lost 20% of it. So, we are still going to be intact with the next opportunity to make money, but we are not going to be having to come up 20% just to break even. So that's the aggressive model. And you can see that there's much, it's not, <laughs> it's a much smoother ride than what the S&P 500 is giving. So the next model is our moderately aggressive. It looks a little similar, um, but you can still see that the sea of difference is, is tremendous. We have a lot of value over the S&P. And then as we go to moderate model, you can see that there's even a smoother ride. Um, we haven't been trying to get in and get out to try making quicker dollars. Um, it's the people are just settled in, not having to worry about being in this tumultuous market. And then moderate conservative looks very similar to the moderate. Um, but the people that have this portfolio have been feeling very good about their market about being in this market, which is 100% of our objective. Don't lose money first. 
and then only after one is accomplished, then when it's, there's going to come a time in the market where it's easy to make money again. We want to have all of our marbles in the game when that occurs. So how do you know which model best suits you? We don't uh, mention this risk profile assessment, which we actually have on our website, that you can complete, you tabulate it, and it tells you which model best suits you. Now, one of the one of the most the things that we do that I've heard the most comments about is our transparency, because we work in a in a very untransparent industry. So, what we want we want people to know exactly what we're doing, not only what we're doing, what we're thinking. So, each week, I actually write an email that goes out to all of our clients that. Uh, kind of gives a macro view of, of what I believe is going on in the economy, both in, in the US and Europe. Wherever, wherever things are going on, I try to keep track of it and, and let you know what we're thinking of that. And then Don writes a weekly briefing on the website in what we call the briefing room. And if you could maybe touch base on that, Don. What we do is we look at the last week's uh, market activity and we, we talk about two things. First of all, we talk about what we refer to as technical analysis. Uh, we use a lot of charting uh, to, to define the cycles that, that John has talked about. Uh, it's, charts essentially reflect all of the actual um, trading and investing action that took place over the course of, of any time period you're looking at. But we look at it at the end of every week to basically say, okay, here's what the market did. Here's what participants in the market did. And from a technical perspective, here are the, the cycles. And here are the cycles on a number of different time frames. So for example, what does our weekly cycle look like? What does our daily cycle look, look like? And we may even look at a, let's say a four hour cycle just to see if the market is giving any indication, any heads up in terms of what it's doing. So we spend, uh, uh, we really have three sections of the briefing. We've got the charts at the top that you see on the, on the, on the page here. Um, and then we've got a, a narrative. The first part of the narrative addresses the technical perspective, addresses where we think the market is, what it did over the past week, where we think it's going in the near term. And then toward the bottom of that, we also provide what we call portfolio impact, which basically means, okay, given the background, given the backdrop of the market, um, you know, what have we done with the various portfolios given that backdrop uh, over the past week. And if you go back, for example, and look at, at the briefings that, that go back to earlier in 2011, and we have all the archives up on the web, you can, you can kind of follow this. You can see, OK, here are the cycles. Here's what we're doing with your money. Here's the next week. Here's what we're doing with your money. And we do that week after week after week. So as John said, our goal is to be completely transparent. Uh, we don't want you wondering what we're doing. We don't want you wondering why we're doing something. We want you to know right up front that this is how we're handling your money, and then we're going to tell you after the fact this is how we handled your money. And so that allows you folks to sleep at night, us to sleep at night. And, and, and frankly, we believe that's how all businesses should be run, and it's something that we, we hold very near and dear to our hearts uh, with our firm, and, uh, and we're going to continue to do that. So that, that briefing goes up every weekend. Uh, certainly by Monday morning, it's up for the preceding week. Often it, it goes up uh, much sooner than that. Hallelujah. So the next question is, well, well, how expensive is this? <laughs> you know, we we designed this approach in a manner that we would want someone to do it for our parents if we weren't doing it for them. So we know that actively managing performance is actually actually managing the cost so that you can get the performance. We believe in, in an inexpensive approach that is always liquid. So if somebody needs money, they can get it. There's not a 10-year hold. There's not a, you know, you know, so many mutual funds uh, will charge you if you, get, if you buy them and then get back out within the first quarter or so. So our management fee inside a 401k plan starts at 1.25% and, and, and comes out at point three one two five percent per quarter so so it's a very inexpensive it's it's less than the average mutual fund cost in our IRA plans and and non-qualified accounts we begin at one and a half percent which is point one two five percent monthly of the account uh, ending value each month 
and and that percentage goes down as the account size increases. So, as I said, we we take the, the fees out quarterly from 401k plans that come out monthly in IRAs and non-qualified accounts. So, since since we know, you know, we we trade more often than what an asset allocation and diversification approach would do. So we know that, that since we can trade more often, we want to make sure that there aren't trading costs that go to our clients. So we use custodians that either have no or very low cost to trade. So there's no, nothing to get started. There's no cost to stop if you don't like what's going on. You only pay while you're using our service. And since our fees are, are less than what the national averages are, the chances are that, that you can have your account actively managed and not be paying anything more than what you already are. So, what are the benefits? <laughs> you know, in a 401k plan, we don't replace the person who, who sold the plan to your company. We don't replace the guy who's doing the education. We are effectively an alternative to the mutual funds uh, that are inside of there. So we're, we're not replacing anything. We're just adding two and trying to make the registered replica even better. Uh, benefit is we watch your account every single day. We, we are a, a management approach that you can actually do whatever it is you're doing during the day knowing that somebody is keeping an eye on your account. And we keep you up to date all the time as to what we're doing with it and what we're thinking about it, uh, what we think we might be doing next in the event of, of certain moves through the briefing. So, like I said, we are only an investment option within the plan. Uh, you no, no longer need to pick your own funds. You don't have to have your broker pick your funds for you anymore. You receive the same statement you've always received. You access your account the same way. Um, and if you want more information, you can actually go onto our, our website at 401kgrowth.com, and we have many videos and other information products to help you understand our approach. So in the 401k side, to get started there, you just need to make sure that your, your, uh, your employer has the self-directed brokerage account option available. And then once they have it available, or maybe they already do have it available, you simply open that account up for yourself, complete the risk profile, uh, sign the authorization forms, and then transfer any money in there that you want to. It's quite simple. We obviously would help you do that. So this is simply a kind of a textbook capturing profit with technical analysis that they asked me to write an analysis of the book. I wrote one, and then they made it the forward. So this is, <laughs> this is just a couple of paragraphs that really shows my thought process behind investing. So. And a disclaimer, we're not, we're not actively uh, soliciting any, giving you any advice at this point. We're just trying to show you, you know, our approach to the whole thing. So, but thank you very much, Joseph. Well, thank you, John and, and Don, for uh, just sharing. So I'm going to have Larry, uh, Tyler, go ahead and share his comments or his questions first, and then I'll make some as well, and then we'll hear from Sherry, too. Um, I really appreciate, in, uh, John, you and Don, and what you said. Uh, I, we have not, uh, John, you and I have talked before today, uh, but have not talked about your investment uh, philosophy and how you manage your company. It's, it's, uh, I really appreciate your approach. Um, I, I wrote down the word active management, and I think that is a, as an investor is very, very critical. In my career as a as working in banks, managing, helping manage banks, and then uh, working with business owners and providing capital to them in the form of loans, I've, uh, there's a similar type situation that happens in the investment of, of of your funds in a 401k or IRA uh, versus lending money to business owners, helping business owners manage in their investment in their own business. 
And one thing I have learned over the years is in watching both the investment market, uh, stock market and whatnot, and in banking is that we're all prone, <coughs> excuse me, to irrational behavior if left to ourselves. And there's where I, I love what uh, John, you and Don are doing is the active management and managing it by cycles. And I, what I'll look at is, is, is or say, minimizing the risk. And there's two forces, I believe, um, that w among others that we all in, in have a tendency to embrace and employ in our day to day. And it's loss aversion. I mean, once losses start, left to ourselves, tomorrow, 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 and we keep digging a hole deeper and deeper, unless we've got some somebody uh, to help. Uh, come along and help manage and reduce our losses. Another is uh, a force is our commitment. We are committed many times. We've taken a stance and we stay down that road and hardly ever change. And this is what I see in the investment market with people's 401ks and, and their uh, cash that they put into the stock market many, many times. It's very similar to banking and business owners. is. They're committed to a certain path, and they will not change. Uh, they take a beating and keep, keep keep getting beat. And what I hear, what John, you and Don are saying is, is based on the historical cycles, minimize that loss through active management. And in my uh, approach to running my business, looking at biblical principles to, and this is, what you're doing is employing biblical principles, in my opinion. So, a good example of that is is you know we go back. John showed a slide of, of uh, I think it was early uh, early September was it uh, this particular fall where you know we were positioning long the market uh, many of our portfolios, um, but then you know the market started breaking a, a, a pretty important range, a pretty important technical support area, and. Uh, and we had to get clients out of the market, and we, we you know, get it basically everybody into uh, uh, into cash, and, and we stayed on the sidelines, you know, as the market proceeded to lose, as John said, almost 20 percent. And and I guess the analogy I would make is is that you know, if, if you're standing outside and and you're do, doing something, and all of a sudden you see clouds start to come and it starts starts drizzling, you know, and you look around, you you want to get in the house, you know. You, you don't you don't just want to look up and say oh well that's interesting and then stand out there as as the deluge uh, you know pours down on you for the next nine hours and so you know we we try to take advantage and uh, and 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 heed the the warning signals uh, the the signals that may seem like a subtle drizzle to start but um, you know ultimately you know there there is a time to act and there's a time not to act and uh, you know that that's that's proved wise over time, and probably will continue to prove wise uh, as as time goes on. Well, I I certainly agree. Just quickly in, in that, but what I see in the business realm many times is that we don't get out of the rain, or we don't heed the warnings, and but when we surround ourselves with what I believe professionals that are looking out for our best welfare, as, as I believe y'all are, uh, John, you and Don, and for your customers, um, that's, that's, that's a critical factor. I've seen it time and time again in, it, in our businesses and in our investments in our businesses and in our investments like in our 401ks, we do not heed the warning. Uh, that aversion to loss and that commitment to that path we've taken, irregardless of what's what's brewing up above us. So I appreciate and, and compliment you all on your, uh, uh, your philosophy there and the stance you're taking. Well, thank you. Thank you, uh, Larry. I, I, I appreciate uh, your comments, and um, I agree uh, completely. What stood out for me, uh, John and Don, for what you shared was just you said your number one priority is to prevent large losses. You know, where you had that one slide that was really good where it showed that if you get out 
when you've only lost 10%, you only have to make up 11% to catch up. But if you allow it to right. be 50% loss, um, you have to gain 100% to catch back up. And even right. taking, you know, what's happened in this extremely volatile year, 2011, from February to October, um, you, you, you know, your fund stands at 20% above the S&P. And for the S&P to get up to where you are now will take a, 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 you know, them being in the market or, or anyway, the market going up a significant amount. And when that happens, you're going to get back, you'll be back in the market. And so yours is going to, you're already starting at 20% higher. And that's going to go up significantly. And as you compound over time, that, I mean, that compounding effect gets to be greater and greater. So that 20% after a year might be, 80% after three or four years, you know, a difference between yours and the S&P or even greater than that. And I like what Larry said about just the active uh, management and, uh, and also about, you know, that we're inclined to, we don't get out of the rain. We see the rain's coming, but we think, well, we've got to recover now. You know, greed kind of takes over or foolish thinking. But here you have an objective decision maker uh, decision making by professionals so you know I like I like that approach and limiting the volatility because if you have a lot of money if you've got five thousand dollars in there if you lose it all well that's not that big a deal I mean it is depending on how much money you have but but if you have a million dollars in there or a hundred thousand dollars in there you know that's a lot bigger deal <laughs> and so so um, I think just tapering the or con helping control that volatility from an investor standpoint is uh, just helps you stomach the, uh, the cycles a lot better. And then obviously, you know, I haven't really heard someone talk about uh, following the cycles or, uh, and, you know, uh, noticing the cycles like you're talking about and, um, and capitalizing those, not just on the day, uh, not just even on the longer term picture, but even on the uh, uh, the hour by hour, even uh, shorter cycles than that. So anyway, those were right. things that that stood out for me with with what you were sharing. And I, I had a lot of money in my IRA at one point, and um, I would have loved to have been connected to <laughs> connected to Pivot Point Advisors, you know, to let you manage a significant amount of portfolio. Let me ask you, how how much money does someone have to have in their four hundred one k or IRA? to get started with this, you know, with investing with you? You know, we have not set minimums. You know, I grew up on a dairy farm, and I, and I, I set out to offer people with no money <laughs> the ability to have high-quality advice. You know, so some people would call that the poverty mentality, but I, 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 I fall going back to your roots. I want anybody that want to have help be able to get it. You know, you know when you give, you know, my parents always said when I was a kid, you know, it, it's better to give than receive. You know, but on Christmas morning, man, there is no way in the world you could get me to believe that. <laughs> but now, and you become a Christian, you know, you realize it truly does, true joy comes from giving, you know, and not receiving. So we have specifically not put minimums on our accounts. You know, if, if there's, if, if one of our custodians is going to charge $10 every time we make a trade, you know, we don't want to have a $20 account, you know. <laughs> there's, there's a point where it just doesn't make sense. But, you know, when they don't charge anything for trades, you can have relatively small accounts and, and still make it work. So we don't have minimums but we pay attention to what the custodians are doing so that uh, so that we always are trying to make, you know, wise choices, if you know what I mean. Okay. And, John, didn't you mention that what you're doing, your investment, your, your investment advice and even your, uh, uh, you know, putting money into invest, someone could do with their personal savings account too? Is that true? Absolutely. There's, okay. The thing that most people don't understand is that our approach is, is always liquid. So even if we're fully invested, uh, three days after somebody requests all of their money, they could have it. So it's, and, and most of the time we always have 
quite a bit of money in cash, you know, at least in this kind of market, so somebody can get their hands on a big chunk of their dollars right away. So while they're not using it, it can be invested or being lost for them. But if they need it, it's there, you know, in, in a very short period of time. Very liquid. Okay. Well, that that's uh, that's very valuable, too, because we never know when some significant emergency is going to come up, too. That's right. But when you lose your money for years, you know, it, it just it just doesn't make that much sense to have your money doing that. Well, Sherry, let's just hear from you any comments uh, you'd like to make, and then also why you think that this is something that's, you know, that's uh, will just spread across the the country. This approach, or what what John and Don are doing. Right. Well, when John first entered the investment um, arena about 20 years ago, I still remember like yesterday all the people coming to him asking how should they allocate their 401ks. And of course, brand new in the industry, he had no clue. <laughs> and so, you know, his shot in the dark was as good as anybody's. And then, you know, everywhere we went, people kept asking us, those questions, and we just started thinking, why don't people know what to do with their with their, re, their retirement money? And it really didn't make sense to us that there was no help. And even the brokers who sell the plans to the companies, by um, by law, they're not allowed to give um, financial advice as to how to asset allocate, people's 401ks. So people are really virtually left to themselves to make decisions on their largest, for most people, it's their largest retirement resource. And it really wasn't until um, John started studying the cyclic analysis and understanding how things work like this that he started finding that there are answers to how things move in the market and the economy. And I think as Larry mentioned, many people are committed to just a certain philosophy and they just stick to it no matter what happens. And especially in uncertain econ economic times like we have had in the past several years, you know, you can sh very quickly think of entire ship. And I've just watched my dad, who's just recently retired there, moving to Florida and retiring right now, I watched him struggle to decide to retire because his portfolio lost up to 50%. And then by employing these strategies in the last several years, he's been able to recover all of the losses that he incurred, which has given him now the confidence to be able to retire and know that he will not run out of money in his retirement. So I just personally see so many people benefit from what John and, and Don are doing that, you know, I just I believe that they're called to this position to help so many people in the country um, during this and especially it's uncertain in uncertain times. So as I prayed in the beginning, um, for God to give hope and peace to people, you know, where the, the enemy targets people is in fear. And if we can um, bring God into the picture, that will alleviate that fear because fear cannot be um, in the same place as love. So that's what I believe ultimately Don and John have to bring to the entire nation um, in an area where no attention has been given. Very well said. Thank you. Yes, I, I agree. I agree. Well, listen, I, I'm just going to share a thought with you, each of you in the audience uh, who's on this uh, call live, for those of you who watch this at some point in the future, the recording. Um, you know, my God-given gift is connecting people ideas and resources for creative miracles. And, you know, I, I knew a lot about investing and was managing my own retirement account, but it's a lot of work. And these are professionals. And not only are they professionals at managing your money, but they have a, uh, they understand the godly cycles and they also um, 
uh, they live by biblical principles. And it's so nice to have people like that that you can trust and who are transparent, as, as John was talking about, uh, helping to manage your money. And, and, you know, for some of you, you might not have a 401K or IRA, as we saw in the initial poll. But, that does, but, but chances are you know some people, some family members or friends who do have the money. And I was thinking, you know, if, if you have a business or you have a ministry, or, you know, perhaps you could uh, point people to the recorded video uh, that you know that have money to invest and aren't satisfied uh, with the results they're getting or, or they want to have uh, that more security and still have the upside potential for that growth, um, you could refer them. And if they exceed a certain amount, maybe they could give to your ministry or to your cause, you know, whatever's important, um, you know, so that if you help, help them out, maybe they can help you out. But even if they don't help you out directly, as John was saying, you know, he grew up on a dairy farm, and his his father or his parents taught taught him and uh, to give, and that it's in giving that we receive. And so, just by helping connect other people to resources that are valuable to them, uh, somehow God, you know, does these miracles in the background, and he he provides for you in in new and creative ways. So I want to encourage each of you to take some action, whether it's referring a person to the recorded video, whether it's a choosing to invest and to contact uh, John um, uh, about this. Um, you will be seeing a survey when you uh, exit from the web, when we close the webinar, and we'd appreciate it if you could go ahead and complete that. And also, you'll receive an email about six hours afterwards and another email uh, with telling you the link where the recording is going to be. It also has John Norquay's uh, email address if you want to contact him uh, about uh, making an investment. And then, or if you're just you know, you're not sure and you just you, you want to have a short uh, uh, a short consult, he could do that for you. Um, so anyway, those are comments I wanted to make. Larry, do you have any comments you'd like to make from from your end? From you know, you're not actively involved in John and Don's business, but you know, you're a financial person. Well, I, I can endorse uh, entirely what, uh, from some practical experience, I'm seeing here um, working with some non-traditional lenders. There's a lot of people, entities, businesses out there that are in the market that, that are looking for ways to improve their yield on their return. Of, the, of their idle funds, and especially from if they're operating businesses, and um, what John and Don have talked about today, really, and here's what Sherry mentioned, and what I'm seeing people need too, and echo this: they want choices, they want options, and they want honesty and integrity, and they want results, and um, that's what you get with these guys uh, from what I'm hearing and seeing and, and believing. So uh, I appreciate what y'all are doing, guys. Hallelujah. Yes, well, thank you. Well, John, will you go ahead and close us with a prayer, and we'll say goodbye to our audience here. Father God, we thank you for everything that you've given us. It's to you that all the glory is given. We know we couldn't even breathe without you. Everything we do, we want directed by you, Father God, so that we're doing your will and not our own. It's your love that we want to make clear goes out to everyone, a perfect reflection of you, just as Jesus was. And it's in his name that we come to you. In the name of Jesus, amen. 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 Well, John and Don, thank you for that uh, the wonderful presentation. And uh, Sherry and Larry, appreciate your comments. And we appreciate each of you in the audience um, participating in the live webinar. For those that watch it in the future, thank you for investing your time. And, and uh, we just pray that you'll take wise action ultimately and that you'll be a good steward with the finances that God entrusts you with. Thank you, everybody, and good night. Thank you, Justin. Thanks, Jeff.